Hey everybody, Gregor Arturo here in Silo Forge. And uh, it just happens that I got the camera set up for a nice little train and forward motion of energy happening right now. And uh, nice backdrop, isn't it? Anyways, uh, someone wrote me a letter, and so uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna read the letter or part of it. Um, this was a question of his by Tyler Staffers. What is significant of a base 10 numbering system? Why are the pecu peculiarities of patterns in one base numbering system bear at deciphering universal principles of electromagnetism? Are there bare base numbering systems at describing electromagnetism? What are the chances you think that the base numbering system we, are, we use are the best at describing the universe? Tyler. Okay, Tyler. We're gonna, we're gonna talk about this. Talk about number systems and why base 10 is so significant. And so, it's all Trinity number systems. And we're going to go through the process of how Trinity number systems work. And they're all based on the powers of three. And if you watch a lot of my videos, I talk about the Trinity, the significance of Trinity systems. And a lot of our society focuses on polarity. Polarity is the extreme, with there, there being a balance point. One and two is the extreme, with three being the balance point. So, I'm going to break this down for you. So, how this works is the first base system, 3 to the 0 power, equals 1. But all these systems have a plus 1 in it. I'll explain the plus 1. I'm going to go down to the powers. 3 to the first is 3, 3 to the second is 9, 3 to the third is 27, 3 to the fourth is 81, 3 to the fifth is 243. Okay? Let's do the simplest. Base 2. 1 plus 1 equals 2. And so, but how does it come about? Phase 2 is composed of two numbers, 0, 1. Uh, phase 4 is 3 plus 1 to get phase 4. And uh, what we're most familiar with is 9 plus 1 is phase 10. So vortex math, base mathematics, is traditionally based off phase 10, the 9 qualitative numbers. Okay? With the 0 being the midpoint. And so what that means is, you can say you have plus 9 one direction, minus 9 another direction, but 0 is the midpoint. Um, but really there, there's 10 different aspects of the system, quantitatively, but not qualitatively. Okay? So even though it's base 10, in a quantitative standard, qualitative is, you could say, base 9. Same with base 2. Base 2, quantitatively, has two aspects, 0 and 1. Something and nothing. We could say nothing and everything. Qualitatively, we have one aspect in base 2. That's what's interesting. Because base 2, this is the simplest as it gets. The 0 and the 1. Something and nothing. It's the infinitely small, which is a 0. 0 is always the infinitely small. And 1 is the infinitely large. And so if I made a number circle, it would just be a 1 on it. And if I figured, figured out linear sequences and doubling sequences, sequences and Fibonacci sequences, all the sequences contain one number, it's one. It's all ones. The whole qualitative system of base two is one because it's the infinite. Quantitatively, how you perceive it, you can see it as infinitely small, infinitely large. Which people might call two different qualities, but it's really two different quantities because infinitely large and infinitely small are both qualitatively infinite. So, um, base 4. Base 4 is what we're going to be talking about because we've all stayed base 10. And base 2, I just summed up. Bang. That's really all it is to base 2. Um, base 4 is 3 to the first power equals 3 plus 1 equals base 4. So there's three qualitative aspects. 0 is always the circle. It's always, it's always the, um, the infinitely small. Infinitely small on the inside and infinitely large on the outside. So there's, um, there's three parts to the whole, and that whole is the infinite. There's three parts to the infinite whole. There's zero parts to the infinitely small. And so we're creating a number circle with three numbers. Now, in vortex math, I talk a lot about linear sequences, doubling sequences, and Fibonacci sequences. There's three fundamental trinities. There are yin-yang structures, growth and decay cycles. 
And those cycles are based on different rates of growth, such as linear, um, doubling, and exponential. And so, or it's really, it's like, it's like uh, additive, multipl multiplicative, and exponential, which are our math signs. We usually say, oh, there's four, plus and minus. Well, that's a polarity. Uh, multiplication and division, that's a polarity pair. And then there's exponentials and, and roots. That's a pair. That's your trend of mathematics. And when you get the qualitative aspects, we see this in the sequences. So the triple number circle, when you, the linear sequences are three linear sequences, kind by one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, kind by two, uh, two, four, uh, six, eight, uh, ten, and so on. Um, and counting by three, three, six, nine, twelve. And so you're seeing a similarity between uh, base ten is the base ten, the six numbers that weren't based off the training um, are all seen in doubling sequence, one, two, four, eight, seven, five. Those six numbers were counted by, say, one or two or four by eight or by seven or by five, includes all of the qualitative numbers in the sequence, just like one and two. But the training numbers were different. Um, in uh, base 10, three and six go between the numbers 369, 369, or 639, 639. Again, if I'm going a little too fast, you're not understanding the, the base 10, go back and look at my other stuff, look at Marco Rowan's work, and really start to understand what vortex-based mathematics is. And, uh, but you have your unique, you, your, your unique set of uh, three. Three always equals three, just like in base 10, nine always equals nine. Doubling sequence, the doubling sequence is just one and two. Um, one, two, four, eight, 16, 32, so on. Um, doubling sequence, there's also a three doubling sequence. 3, 6, 12, 24, something that's in uh, base 10, I don't talk about it much, but in base 10, the doubling sequence for 3 and 6 is 3, 6, 3, 6, 3, 6, 3, 6. The doubling sequence for 9 is 9, 9, 9, 9, 9. And so, the Fibonacci sequence, and this is what's really interesting, is the Fibonacci sequence is 8 numbers. And so linear sequences are based off 3 numbers, doubling sequence is based off 2 numbers, and the Fibonacci sequence is based off 8 numbers. Now here's a pattern of the training. We go into base 10, okay? The linear sequences count by nine, we're tripling the three. The doubling sequences would count by six, we're tripling the two. Um, and the Fibonacci sequence would count by 24, we're tripling the eight to 24. Same with all of these. So base 28, the linear sequences um, count by 28. The doubling sequences count by 18, and the Fibonacci sequences count by 72. All three of these sequences triple, okay? And so, one thing I, I didn't mention, why are we using the, this tripling number system? It's because these three sequences exist in this structure. They don't exist in other base number systems. They only exist in the Trinity number system. That's what's so unique about it. Uh, I have a friend who is basically figured out this pattern, saying, oh, the doubling sequences only exist in this. Corey, thank you, Corey, for this great discovery uh, several years ago. Um, and, but then also the Fibonacci sequences exist, the linear sequences, of course, they're more simplistic. You can find those in all the numbering systems, but not these two. So what's great about this is base 4 allows you to see the core of these patterns in a more simplistic fashion. The doubling sequence is just an oscillation is one, two, one, two. It's, it's the, um, it's the, it's a balanced sequence of all the non trinity numbers. So in base 10, it it's, includes six of the nine. In base four, it includes, or base four includes two of the three. In base 28, includes 18 of the 27. So it's a two thirds ratio. Um, and those are all the numbers of, of uh, I don't even know what to call them, the doubling sequence numbers, uh, the non trinity numbers, and they're based on the primes of one and two versus the prime of the number three. So people might argue, wait, 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 one's not a prime. One is a prime. It's because how we define prime numbers and saying 
prime numbers A and X not divisible by one in itself. That is a horrible definition of prime numbers. The definition of a prime number, in my opinion, is a number that has uh, no, it's, it's a new pattern set, essentially. It has no lower fractals to break it apart. And so the base three is one, two, and three. Um, all prime numbers can be broken down, or all, the whole pattern matrix can be broken down to primes one, two, and three. It is the foundation of pattern structures, understanding those three primes and how they fractalize in more complex qualitative and quantitative patterns. And so, the Fibonacci sequence, the pattern is one, one, two, three, two, two, one, three. Um, and so, okay, I'm going to just zoom in quickly, if you haven't seen, seen the board completely. So if you want to pause it here to look at these sets, I'm just browsing it now. Zoom. I'll go down to the lower ones. Zoom. All right. So the Fibonacci sequence, the numbers are one, one, two, three, and the five becomes a two, the eight becomes a two, the 13 becomes a one, the 21 becomes a three. And so, again, it's like the 24 number sequence, this eight number sequence is split into two parts. One, one, two, three, two, two, one, three. And you can take this one, 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 two, three, one, two, three, two, and one, three, three, and three, six. They're all factors of three when you um, split them apart. And so, actually, uh, when See this I draw this before is do it on this side one one two three and this would be two two one three and so three 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 so you're just getting these pair relationships um very pairs of the whole and so, we are seeing the Fibonacci sequence in the simplest form. It's, it's 1, 1, 2, 3, 2, 2, 1, 3. 1, 1, 2, 3, 2, 2, 1, 3. It's a much simpler way to see the Fibonacci sequence in the simplest of its pattern structures. Can't get simpler than that in terms of understanding the Fibonacci sequence based on the number 8. And what have I been talking about for so long with the number 8? Um, this guy. The octogram. The octogram is the manifestation of the golden ratio, the Fibonacci sequence. In terms of base 10, base 4, it does something different. Okay? And so, base 4, I'm going to show you a, a table I built in the base 4 series. And so, we've got 1, 1, 2, 3, 2, 2, 1, 3. Um, that's one circuit of the Fibonacci sequence. A connects to B, and X, uh, 1, 1, 2, 3, 2, 2, 1, 3. X connects to Y, all right? So this is a double circuit, 4 by 4 matrix. I'm going to zoom in on this one as I talk about it. Whoop. OK. And so. With this, there's all these other patterns in it. The horizontal of the Fibonacci sequence, like I showed. Uh, the diagonal right here, we have 2, 1, 2, 1. Uh, 2, 1, 2, 1. Those are doubling sequences. And I've confirmed all the sequences by expanding into this matrix. So those are doubling sequences uh, opposing. Um, in the uh, other diagonal, we have the sequence 1, 2, 3, 3. And I was, this is the only one I'm not sure exactly what the sequence signifies. We have one doubling sequence. Another doubling sequence, 3, 3, side by side. Um, you can also have an interlacing of the pattern 1, 3, and 2, 3, which I'm not sure what that signifies. But this is such a simple system that the patterns, the patterns are really simplistic. It's just also interpreting the relationships of these simple patterns. Um, in the vertical, um, we have interlaced doubling sequences 1, 1, 2, 2, which is 1, 2, 2, 1. Um, and so if you, in the base 10, you'll see all these interlacing sequences. 
um, this is the simplest form of angel lacing sequences. Um, and these two uh, verticals, we have one, two, three, three. And so you have the interlacing of the two other building sequences, one, two, and three, three. Um, so, so the sequence is one, three, two, three. And uh, yeah, I went, I went through all of them. <laughs> and, and that's those patterns. However, this guy creates when you turn it into uh, a torus. And so we take that. Doo -doo 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 -doo. That flat sheet, you bend it into a circle, create a double helix, a double helix formation. And then you can take that double helix and bend it into itself, and we have a tetragram. Why it's a tetragram? And so the tetragram in, in, in holistic, uh, or a call, will show a, uh, a triangle. And so my opinion is when they're talking about the tetragram, is it's based off the base four system. But it gives rise to a tetragon. This tetra actually means the number four. It doesn't mean the number three. Tetrahedron. Do 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 do. I got the All right. Uh, oh. Oh. Ah. Tetrahedron. This is a tetrahedron made out of copper. And so tetrahedron is based on four points. And the hedron means it's a three shape. The gram means it's a 2D piece of geometry that's an interweaving two piece of geometry like the octagram. And so, the tetragram is based on four points and it's two circuits and they're interweaving, opposing each other. There's one circuit, it's an X, Y, X, Y, and A, B, A, B. So, what does this look like, people? Looks like light. An oscillation of the magnetic and the electric fields. It's the simplest form of coils I have found so far in existence. And it's four points, two, two sequences, um, and uh, they're, they're going to be slightly out of phase with each other. Um, I have to actually model this in a 3D modeling program to see how these actually lay out because they're offset or so slight. Um, but, uh, why this collapses to a single point, okay, is when you have uh, the the six by six matrix in base ten um, that represents the hexagram, uh, two circuits interweaving every three, so it's A, B, C, and X, Y, Z. Um, the hexagram, uh, because it's three circuits, it creates a triangle. Two circuits creates a line. There's no space in between it, so you don't have a, you don't have um, the the midpoint of the line is the inner part of the circle, or the outer point of the line is the outer part of the circle because it's a straight line. The midpoint is in the center, and a uh, triangle the midpoint is here, and so in a hexagram, I'm making a hexagram. One of these guys, this one I made, I just haven't welded it and magnetized it. Um, a hexagram, uh, this point is the inner point, um, well, this point is the outer point. It's the midpoint of the line and the outer point of the line that sets up the ratios for this geometry. However, the tetragram, because it's two points, the midpoint is in the center, which means you create the torus that claps to an infinitely small point in space. It's not a scalar form of geometry, like the doubling sequence is represented in the hexagram. The octagram is the golden ratio. Um, in the tetragram, you're going from infinitely large to infinitely small. It's pure scaling, infinitely large, infinitely small, and the simplest form of the coils. So, what I'm showing you with all of this is base 10 is very significant. Why is base 10 so unbelievably significant with all of these systems? Because it is, it is the third base system in a system of three. It is three to the, uh, it's three squared, um, three times three, um, it, is, it is the third system. Base four is the second system, base two is the first. Base 28, What's interesting is base 4 and base 5 is base 28 and base 82. They're 
flip-flopped with each other. And so, and I think the thing with all these numbers is you have to take minus two away from each of the base systems to get rid of your infinitely small number, your infinitely large number, and you're left with the, the quantity in between. Base two, there's nothing. That's why it's just infinitely large and small. Base four, there's two. Base 10, there's eight numbers. Base 28 is 26 numbers, which might have a significance of why iron is so cool. And also, is the number 26 is found through a lot of 3D geometry. Um, base 82 and 80, which makes me think of mercury. Um, and, but that, that's one way to start to see other ways of these patterns branching out. So, yes, it is all significant. At least I feel it is. And so, the question is, did I just communicate this in this moment to you through this camera, through YouTube, to where you're like, you know what? I feel, I'm resonating with this information that it is significant. Well, I hope I just did my job because that's what I like to do. I like to teach. And uh, it's simplicity. This is the fractalization of patterns. This is how sentience comes into being. It's the fractalization of sentience, the fractalization of perspective, and how uh, patterns were fr uh, fractalized around a single point in space. So the openness, one of the most important symbols is the dot and the circle. The perspective looking out. And we're looking at the patterns of those perspectives, the qualitative patterns, which intertwine with the quantitative patterns. Qualitative circle, quantitative line, you get that together, and what do you got? You got the spiral. Reality moves as a spiral. So, that's that tetragram, base four, trading number systems, patterns rule this reality. And so, if you're feeling some indecisiveness with yourself, I say take a look at your struggles and patterns of you. And maybe things might start clicking in another way if you've never taken that route before. But until next time, adios my friends. Namaste. Enjoy the rest of May. Bye.